I, I crossed over into this, uh, into the berm in the center and it just got loose and I tried to correct it and it, nope. So I just went down. I never get my good crashes on, on tape. I don't think I broke anything. If you recall in the last episode, I spent a few days inside, just outside of Salt Lake City, hanging with my buddy Derek and staying at uh, his family's horse barns. Unbelievable place that I stayed at. And we got a chance to ride around this area and in particular this road. And uh, after a few days there, I decided to bug out and head towards Colorado, trying to make it in one day. Yeah, this is just a fantastic start of the day, and it was a really long day of riding, and <laughs> it was it was dry and hot. I rolled out over the mountain, uh, I think this was Highway 190 into Park City, and then across the desert, finally crossing back into my beloved Colorado. I just realized a few miles back that I have ridden this route before. I guess I just don't re uh, recognize the names of the towns. But when I get on the route, I recognize the, the landmarks. And uh, I'm headed to Duquesne, Utah. I was just here a few months back when I came uh, south into Colorado for the first time this ride. I started realizing, oh heck, this is, the, this is the place where I camped in the rest area up here. I came across here and I didn't film any of it because all my batteries are dead. I was riding a lot longer and a lot further than I intended to, so I didn't keep my batteries charged enough. So I didn't get any of this on film. So that's what I'm going to do this trip is uh, get some time lapse and uh, show you how, the, how beautiful it is. Despite the smokiness, it wasn't anywhere, it wasn't smoky at all the last time I came through here. So, man, there's 10 times the traffic, but all of the, uh, the double fuel trucks are up here again. So, yeah, I'm going to go across to Duquesne just like I did last time without, I may pull into the rest area. And, uh, yeah, that was just such a welcome thing the last time I was so cold and so tired. That's where I'm headed, headed to, uh, headed to Duquesne and then Colorado somewhere, I don't know. My recent journey across these mountains was very vivid in my mind, but the last time I had come across, it was very dark and very cold. And here you see one of the many double tankers that run this route. I, I think I described it before as the pipeline because uh, that I just, you just don't see vehicles like that on what, what I would consider a mostly empty road but uh, this place this stretch of road that I did not really get to see because it was so dark and I was so tired and I didn't want to stop and look around this was a this was a real thrill to be able to go back across here and experience it anew and uh, luckily this was just the start of my day or fairly close to it so I was not nearly as tired as I would be at the end of the day when again it got very dark and very cold before I made camp not a place I like to be. After arriving in Duquesne, I once again turned south and went down this amazing canyon. I think this is fairly unique in America. There's not a whole lot of beautiful long stretches of road like this with very little traffic. And there wasn't. There was very little traffic. 
But what's also hard for me to believe is how people existed in here back in the day. There's obviously some old settlements, very little water, but I guess at certain times of the year there is a small creek that runs through here. Um, probably after the snow melts, I'm not really sure, but it, it made me think. And this is a good road to do some thinking on. And eventually I exited the canyon and continued to roll south towards Green River before getting on the interstate and really turning it up to get into Colorado. Right about 300 miles today, and it's, I don't know, about 2 o'clock. I'm at a rest area, hanging over the, uh, the desert here. Um, about 100 miles west of Grand Junction. And that's the interstate. I've been riding down that, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes maybe. Just uh, came down from Green River, got on the interstate, and I mean, there's... There may be another road, another way to get there, but it'll take two or three hours as long. And this is um, Crescent Junction here, and all these vehicles going down south there are going to Moab. It was a, uh, it was a, it was a kind of a tough decision, but I've seen enough of Moab. I think I spent three weeks there, and I got eaten by bugs, and it's just not enough motivation I've spent enough time there this year already it's smoky it's still hot there's probably still bugs there so I think I'm just uh, gonna go to Grand Junction uh, maybe get some dinner and then probably keep heading east the uh, the big goal within the next couple of days is uh, going back to Buena Vista I love that place and I can't think of anywhere else I'd, I want to be right now but um, I'm not in a huge hurry, although it looks like it. 300 miles, and I've got another 100 miles before I make a decision on which way to go. But probably, uh, probably camp somewhere east of Grand Junction, maybe, maybe another 30, 40 minutes. I don't know those towns uh, beyond there, like Rifle, and I'm trying to think of the other one. I'd kind of like to explore some of that. It's still a little bit deserty around there, but. I don't know enough about it. I've never gotten that far off the road there. So, anyway, cool rest stop. Just uh, just had to take a break because man, everything's just tired. Everything is tired. <laughs> yeah, check out the check out the uh, landscape. It's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, this would probably be a good place to camp, except too many people, too high of a profile. Yeah, this would be an outstanding place to camp. Outstanding. There's water right there. Anyway, i get back on the road here in a minute. I think it's really critical on these long rides, these journeys across country, that you take small breaks. And this was an important one for me, not just to rest my buns, but to get some perspective and look across this beautiful desert uh, before rolling through Grand Junction and then further east up into deep, deep Colorado.
I had intended to stop for food after exiting the interstate, but it just did not feel right. I did not see anything that reached out and slapped me, and that's pretty much why I traveled almost well into dark before stopping for dinner. And I think this is probably dangerous, but there's just something about being disappointed with food on the road, and it happens a lot for to me, and I'm not really sure why. Um, I guess I just have a small standard for food and service, and most of the time the uh, the drive-ins, the the fast food places don't do it for me. But then again, I'm you know at least sometimes they have standards, and that's what I see a lot. That's uh, I don't really appreciate with, uh, especially in tourist areas. And there's much of Colorado that is very touristy, and this is one of those towns I think. Um, so I continued up into the mountains. Uh, it's nine o'clock at night, <laughs> and my, I'm out on Independence Pass. I'm not sure if you can see. But there are cars way the hell down here. We came up here. Me and the boys came up here after we left Buena Vista. And that's where I'm going back. Yeah, you can see those. Holy crap. Try to hold it steady here for a little bit so you can kind of see it. Um, yeah, so I think I've got just over 600 miles in today. And uh, it was a pretty good ride, except, golly, I'm so sore. My butt's sore, my legs are sore. I'm trying to keep my ass up off the seat, but it's kind of hard to do at 80 miles an hour, or hard to do for any length of time. So, yeah, I kind of felt like I did a little bit of an iron butt today, but yeah, nowhere close. Sure, it, it feels like it though. It feels, my body feels like I've done an iron butt. And I'm in a little switch back here, and, Everybody is running wide. I hope they don't run over me. Here's one coming down the hill now. Watch him run wide. Oh, he's over his high beams. Oh, he's staying in his lane. He's staying in his lane. Oh, wow, he stayed in his lane. Holy crap. Yeah, maybe he's not drunk. Well, I just grabbed a steak in Aspen and it was disappointing. But they comped me a couple of beers since the since my meal was so disappointing. It was the same place we had barbecue last time, and they assured me that the steaks were wonderful. Thirty-four dollar steak, you would think it would be pretty doggone good. I'm gonna try to camp in um, Twin Lakes, just down the hill, um, if I can remember where I camped with Tim last year. But we'll see. It's cold as shit up here, and I think we're probably around ten thousand feet, so kind of hard to tell. What does this say here? I just checked my altitude. It is 11,163 feet up here where I'm standing. No wonder it's so freaking cold. I gotta get down the hill. Twin Lakes is the possibility where I'm camping. Should be about, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight miles down the hill. Should be getting a little bit warmer because it can't get any colder than this. Crap, 11,000 feet. Monday, September 12th, uh, just got out of a long ride last night, got in, I don't know, 10 hours on the bike, 466 miles from Granite, Utah to Granite, Colorado. I'm back in Colorado, I'm 20 miles out of Buena Vista, it was a series of stupid events, I, I kept thinking that I was going to stop somewhere. But my stop had a lot more to do with food than anything else. It just I just kept riding and riding and riding and thinking my stop's right around the corner and, and look. And so I just kept pushing and pushing. And I pushed over the freaking uh, Independence Pass last night. Oh, it must have been 25 degrees up there because it was 20, a high 20s here, I think, last night uh, when, I, when I looked. One o'clock, I looked at the temps. Um, really, really cold, shockingly cold. So luckily, I had I had some good gear uh, that I could sleep in. It was still cold. Um, yeah, if it's gonna be that cold this week, um, I'm gonna have to modify. I've got an underquilt for this. I've got a 
a, a, a top quilt I've been using as a pillow for the mattress um, that I haven't even tried out because it hasn't been hot. But yeah, if it's going to be anywhere near the 30s, the, the forecast all over this area says low 40s, which is fine. I don't have a problem with low 40s. I sleep like a baby in low 40s. But when it gets down to the low 30s and 20s, it's cold and crisp. I'm 20 miles outside of where uh, I want to be, which is Buena Vista. So, as you can see, I took almost nothing off the bike. So I'm just going to pack up here and keep rolling. Find me a nice campsite uh, shortly after noon. It's, what is it? Yeah, it's not even 11. So I'll, I'll probably be setting up camp again in 30 minutes. So hopefully, I've got an idea of a new campsite. It's going to be closer to town, hopefully. Better signal warmer and this time of the year warmer is good unbelievable how often my flashes of brilliance don't have chemicals related to it no weed no beer no coffee especially no coffee I haven't had any coffee this morning but i came up with a new approach to the poser question and the identity question that's going to be the focus going forward is identity less poser more identity but imagine like bikers somebody that is into fly fishing imagine them dressing up in waders and hat and a little vest get your fishing pole walking into a bar hanging out with your buddies you'd stand out a lot if you were there by yourself and everybody might ask you hey what are you doing are you going fishing why are you wearing your waders in the pub but you don't run into that with fishermen if all your friends are dressed the same way, you're all you all look like idiots to the rest of the world, but not to each other. So nobody goes, "Hey man, you going fishing? Looks like you're going fishing." You could go everywhere with that. So fishing, tennis, you get your football gear on. <laughs> That would be so funny. Yeah, I play football. Uh, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> Anyway, about to roll out of here. This is a, a cool, cool spot. And it's a great spot when you're just too tired to go find the new spot. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm going to go find me a new spot. Hopefully. If not, I got my old spot. I can go back up on the hill. <laughs> Onward! There is a lot to be said about true adventure and exploring the unknown but there's something that's very comforting about knowing where you're going knowing the territory where you're going knowing that there's a place to camp knowing that there's resources close by knowing the ease of access to water and food and fuel and possibly places to find help repairing your bike parts whatever and uh, for me it tends to be a lot about um, cellular service since I actually work on the road uh, not a lot but enough to <laughs> enough to uh, impact my income significantly if I'm not prepared to do work uh, while I'm out on the road so uh, resources all the above that I just listed are very important and it's good to know um, where those resources are so it's very comforting to get back into an area like i'm going to now well i'm very familiar with all this area around here I've spent a lot of time here and this is a pretty good example of some of the camping spots i looked at on the side of the road um, that i just decided against uh, just because it's so close to the road and there's so much traffic but you can see this is a beautiful area just down below twin lakes and i am headed south towards Buena Vista, the place that I know very well. I've camped there many times and I'm going back for the second time this season and I was pretty excited about heading south. So.
make sure you join me next time when I actually ride up one of the old roads where I had ridden up last time and dump the bike. Ah, just I wasn't paying attention and the road was really slushy and sandy and I almost didn't get it up by myself. Kind of a kind of a preview for old age. <laughs>